Mr. Klein Storytime. Hello, my name is Mr. Klein. I've been an elementary school teacher for almost 30 years, and I love reading stories to young people just like you. In fact, I've got a great story that I'd like to share with you right now. So let's get started. Truman, written by Jean Reedy, illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummins. Truman. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. He lived with his Sarah, high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars, and the number 11 bus, which traveled south. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked at anything or anybody. He was peaceful and pensive, just like his Sarah. One day, Sarah ate a big banana with her breakfast, clipped a blue bow in her hair, and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it, but zero tortoises did. Sarah placed seven green beans in Truman's dish. Two more than usual. She kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and whispered, Be brave. Then she left. Not to worry. She'd left before, and she'd always returned. But this time, that backpack was particularly big, and Sarah looked particularly pensive. And that banana, and that bow, and let's not forget about those extra beans. That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah boarding the number 11 bus going south. The bus roared away. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited. He waited a thousand hours, tortoise hours, that is, until he could wait no longer. He would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 south, even amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking, even if it seemed impossible. Bonk! That's when he noticed the rocks, three rocks, that had always been there. Ordinary rocks that now seemed extraordinary. And the arm of the couch, and the pillow propped just right, and that tall, tall boot, and the rug, that glorious, endless rug. Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Truly unsettling. But perhaps most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis or the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. Which way was south, anyway? Now the sun hung low, like Truman's head and heart. Just then, and then, vroom, screech, whoosh, up floors and under doors, Truman heard it, a bus. It was time, time to catch the number 11 South, 
amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking. Yet standing there in that ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive and brave. But just as he was about to slip under the door, through that opening barely the size of a small tortoise, Sarah! She spotted him, shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, Oh, my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and amazing. Sarah kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and tucked him back safely in his tank, where he was peaceful and pensive and proud. And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. Now Truman knew that one day soon he and his Sarah might travel south to see new sights and hear new sounds and think new thoughts. Together. The end. Thank you for coming to Storytime. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I read new stories every week, so be sure to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to hear another one. Hope to see you again soon.